Welcome to Mitts Off, episode one, our pilot episode. I think you're really gonna enjoy hearing from my old buddy and former Toronto Maple Leaf forward, Connor Brown. Mitts Off is powered by Sports Interaction, our exclusive betting partner. Get in the action all summer long. Download the app to get started, 19 plus, and please play responsibly. All right, I want to welcome in one of the really good guys in hockey. Uh, when I started this project, uh, he was at the very top of the list of guys that I wanted in here. A Tobacco native, someone that every team, especially in nowadays, desires. Um, talk about an underdog story, an underdog success, someone that's grinded through his whole career and since he was a kid. Um, a former Toronto Maple Leaf draft pick, Ottawa Senator. Washington Capital, and most importantly, Erie Otter. Uh, we do have a cool connection. Our fathers played together uh, with the Western Mustangs and coming off a brutal ACL surgery. I am so happy to have in here today and welcome and introduce my boy, Connor Brown. Hey, How's thanks that? for having me. That's, that, that's a pretty <laughs> good that intro, good, man. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's get into it, man. How's the rehab going? It's going great, dude. It's going great. Yeah, honestly, you know what? Um, the surgery was great. Uh, it, it was nice to go after Tom Wilson did his surgery. And so he kind of was able to help me with a surgeon to pick. And, you know, the rehab has been going really well. And, I'm, you know, I'm six months removed from from surgery and I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling good again. So. So from, from my perspective, I remember like I put myself in your shoes when I finished in Edmonton, I thought I had a great three years there. I signed with Jersey in the off season and I was so excited because it was like a veteran team. And I went in and I met Andy Green and Travis Zajac, PA Parento, Kyle Quincy. And then we had this young core, Pavel Zach at Taylor Hall. I was so excited to get there. And first preseason game, I go down, block a shot, break my foot, very first shot. And I just remember like how deflated I was and you just you work that whole summer and like it's a new opportunity new experience and for you four games in playing Vancouver it happens like I can only imagine how deflating that was do you want to give us you know shed some light on on yeah. kind of the initial injury and when that happened and how yeah yeah I mean as soon as as soon as I got hit from behind there in the neutral zone I was uh I felt something that it, it was just unnatural it felt like a little bit of a pop in there and uh and, uh, you know, I, just, I popped up and just, I knew something was wrong. And Did you put weight on it? You no, know, I didn't even try. I, I hopped up. Actually, you know what? Uh, speaking of good guys, Patterson helped me off the ice. I don't know if you, you saw no, that I clip, but I, so I popped up and he was like, saw me struggling on the bench and he gave me a boost <laughs> and I just went right down the tunnel. And yeah, I remember I took a couple steps down the tunnel and just kind of, just kind of collapsed, took a knee in the tunnel more so just out of. I couldn't believe it. You know, I just, I, I really felt that it was, yeah, I could tell it was, it was a big one and, uh, it, it was a serious injury and, um, you know, it, it was, it was deflating for sure. And, you know, you, you go through something like that, you learn a lot about yourself. Um, you know, so it's back to the drawing board and, uh, all you can do is, is just work as hard as you can get yourself out of that hole. And, you know, I, I've six months removed. I feel great. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember the first call I got for surgery was my shoulder, but I remember the ortho calling me and being like, Hey, we have to operate on your labrum. When they called you and initially said like, we got to go under the knife, like feelings, were you nervous, like terrified, like stressed, like what, what, what kind of, what were you feeling there? Yeah. It, um, you know what, it, the, it's tough to, for me, I was feeling just sad almost like you, you just feel like yeah, I, Going into that season, going into last season, I felt as good as I felt about my game. I feel like I've gotten better every year. And um, the season before, last 20 games, I was dealing with some injuries. And, uh, and you know, and so I was really excited to just get to, you know, in a new spot around a veteran team to really, you know, uh, help that team, you know, make a push for the playoffs and, and be a contender. And, um, you know, you, you just, you, you, you get excited about something and to have it taken away from you and, and, uh, in a contract year and, you know, the, it was, uh, it's a super unfortunate situation, but, um, you know, a, a lot of good has come of it. And, yeah. uh, so, you know, like I was telling you before, you know, and, uh, I got a baby on the way and, Real, you know, congrats. and that's, uh, you know, that's, that's been a massive silver lining in this yeah. whole process. And, uh, 
you know, and, and I'm feeling good again. So it's, I'm starting to, starting to get my, uh, my jump back, my swagger back. And so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it was a grind though. <laughs> I mean, that, I, the first month for me or like the first two, you know, three, four weeks were absolutely brutal when you're pretty much like immobile, yeah. but I really love that you said, Wills, like, did you have a couple of people, your family that you like leaned on? And cause I, I just remember mentally, dude, I was, I was just checked out. Like I, like you're just, you know, you're all drugged up and you're in so much pain and, like, did you have people, teammates, any, anybody you leaned on? Yeah. Well, my wife, number one, uh, for sure. I mean, uh, she's been so helpful through this, this year. Um, you know, you, you go to the rink, you come home, you know, we're in a new city too. It's not like we're, we have a, a lot of friends in Washington or like we had a lot of any family in Washington. I've only played three games with the team. So it's not like we were really, you know, I was really acclimated with the, with the boys, you know, yeah. I got to know them over the year, but um, you know, I, I leaned on her a ton and, uh, and she was very helpful, you know, to be there every day, you know, it's, it's rehab is really rinse, repeat. You wake up in the morning, you work as hard oh, yeah. as you can and, and then you rest day, and, and you do as much as you can with your diet. And, yeah. and on top of that family, you know, my mom, dad were, were great, um, brother. And, uh, also one main guy on the caps that I, I would give a, a huge shout out was Carl Haglin. Um, you know, Hags went through it tough, you know, he, he, he got a stick in the eye uh, the year before and it was, it was tough for him to come back. And now he was, uh, recovering from a uh, hip surgery all season. So we were in there every day together. So just, a little rehab know, buddy. Yeah. He, we were just rehab boys and we we're just, he's grinding away at his, uh, his rehab and I was grinding away at mine. And, uh, to go through that process with somebody, you know, it, it made the whole experience a lot better. And, um, and and Hags is a guy who's won two cups and he's done it all in the NHL and to learn from him every day too just you know his mindset and where he sees it and where he sees me and my future and uh bounce some things off of him it's uh it was um it, it was nice to have somebody to go through that with man I remember at least for me when I was rehabbing uh and I had a contract the next year too so like I had that in the back pocket but man there's got to be days where you're just like questioning everything you question your sanity you question yourself as a hockey player you know why am I even doing this and you're doing these stupid exercises every morning and just like the mental side of that for me was really tough like like how was that for you were there challenges you know weeks days at a time yeah no absolutely I mean I, I there there is times throughout the the past six months where we go down the dark rabbit hole of of how is this thing coming is is it going to return and um, am I going to, is it going to feel good again? And, you know, these are the, and you just, you know, my thing was just to remind myself that it's all normal to have these kind of thoughts, you know, it's, it's normal to, you know, feel how tough it is to be through, you know, going through this. And, you know, when you're sitting on the couch every day, resting, recovering, you know, it's not easy for me. I, I'm a guy that likes to be, you know, if I'm in the summer, the mix, yeah, right? like I, I'm on the golf course or I'm, you know, I'm doing, I'm up at the cottage yeah. or I'm, you know, I'm in the gym. I'm, you know, I'm a guy that likes to be doing things and for, you know, for me to sit there and, and just recover, it was tough. It, you know, it, it was, uh, it, it's been one of the toughest things that I had to go through and, and it's just makes that when you turn that corner, you know, which I think I did about a month ago, I turned that corner and started to feel better and the knee started to be responsive and things started to get better. Um, it's, it's makes that, makes that whole process just you feel so much more grateful. See the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I, and I feel like right now, you know, I'm almost in the light, you know, it's six months removed. I'm, you know, I, I the, the knee feels great. And so, but there's a lot of days where you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and it, and it feels, it feels dark and, um, you know, that's when it's, you're grateful to, I'm grateful to have, you know, a supportive wife that was able to be with me in in a new place where, you know, we've, we just moved down to Arlington, Virginia. Like we both never yeah. been to Virginia. And the next thing you know, I'm living there for six months, re battling a rehab, wondering where the next step of my career is going to be. And, um, you know, it was, it was a tough process and it's, it, it just makes, it, you learn a lot about yourself in those, in those types of scenarios. Um, and you can develop a lot about yourself and you can reinvent a lot about yourself. You get a chance to analyze what you don't, what, what you don't like yourself physically, you know, there's maybe some deficiencies that you have and, and, or the, your body mechanics, you want to 
iron out and there's and also things that you know how you you know how you interact how you treat teammates how you treat friends and stuff and so a lot of time to reflect on on how uh just a lot of time to reflect on how how the first half of my career went and how you know how i got to where i was at well you said it right there but uh we listened to an interview and the way you called it was that you were reevaluating everything and is that kind of what you do like as you're coming home now you kind of you know, reevaluate how you're going to train and eat or what exactly do you kind of mean by that, that you're reevaluating? Number one thing I'd say is diet for me is, is reevaluating my diet and making sure that it's, uh, you know, I I was never a guy that just be like super unhealthy, but, um, making sure my supplements are in place, making sure that I'm eating when I'm supposed to eat and eating as much as I'm supposed to eat. And, um, and the correct things and, you know, working with new, with, uh, you know, a great nutritionist now who's, who's, I've able to learn a lot. Um, you know, number one, that's something I reevaluated. Number two, reevaluating on, you know, how my body's moving. Is there, you know, can I help my hips open up more? How can I, that will make me a more efficient skater, things like that, where, you know, how, you know, what it's like to be in the grind of, of every year, Never mind, you know, you're, you're eight months in the season, you take a month off, then yeah. you're three months just back on. There's not much time to really, you know, make these lasting changes that you want. And so when you get a full year to, to, to just rehab and just focus on yourself, uh, you, you're able to make changes that you want to see and, and to better yourself. Like So talk about the, the caps, like to me, the caps, like one of my favorite teams to watch, like ever dude, yeah. like Ovi Backstrom, um, going back far enough to like Carlson Alsner, like, and watching them, like, you know, grind and grind and finally win that cup. That must've been it. Like when you got traded, you must've been excited to go there. Like, and, and can you tell us just a bit about the, the dressing room there and wash and the group of guys? I loved it. I, I, I loved it. Honestly, great guys. Uh, you know, th- that team has been, I feel like that core has been around since I was, you know, in junior yeah. and a fan of the NHL and, and, you know, playing against them all those years. I remember I played a playoff series against uh backy and uh and and that whole group but i backy in in particular i was totally talk about him i'd be trying to trap him down on the penalty kill and he'd just be dicing me up backhand yeah. through my legs <laughs> yeah you know, as a rookie in the league in that playoff series and so um it was it was honestly a lot of fun to get to know ov john carlson like great guy and uh tommy wills a good toronto boy yeah. and he was he's been great all year and so um you know that that's they have a great locker room and and there's a reason that they've won multiple presidents trophies the cups and you can kind of see that in there and they're just sure of themselves and um you know it was a, a lot of fun to get to know those guys over the year tell me about ovi tell, just like give me anything on this guy it's it, like he's just one in a million i mean he he's just a a monster of a man huge like, i tried monster. to reverse hit him the first time i ever played him i was telling the boys last yeah. time and he i just bounced off him but it was like i was so it was like the most starstruck i've ever been yeah. by a guy and, he, and he's just like he's just larger than life i remember the first time he came in here he's like what's up bab he's just like <laughs> he's going around the room saying hi to everybody it's just like he's just uh He's larger than life. One thing that I thought was so funny, as soon as as soon as you get on the ice, you know how you do the Indy 500? Oh, yeah. And so as soon as you get on the ice, he'll grab a puck out of the, out of the net, and from his own end, he'll just fire one down to try to score every single time right in the middle of the net. You know, like, you know yeah, how hard that yeah, is, right? Exactly. To, to shoot from one end to yeah, the other yeah. and just go every single time right in the middle of the net, right in the middle yeah. of the net. He's just, uh, he, he's, uh, he's an anomaly. Like, he just is... He's, he's something special and, and his, his charisma and his, his personality is so great for the game. And, yeah, uh, he's unreal. and he was, uh, he was a lot of fun and you know what, going through something hard process, like I went through this year, he was, he was great for me too, like very helpful and, and kind and, uh. And so he, it was great to get to know him, and he's such a legend. It's, you know, it's, Does it's, he really drink like Coke or Doctor Pepper on the bench <laughs> yes. or something? Yeah, yeah, he loves his cokes. Yeah, yeah, loves his cokes, loves his pints. He's just, yeah, he's just the that. ultimate beauty. You know what I mean? He's just. Uh, well, Tommy's just told me all about him. Tom, like Wills is just like, man, this guy is the man. Like, he's, he's he's the absolute man. It's funny because Tommy Wills is like an absolute machine. I mean, well, you were trained dude, with Willie, Tommy, and he's uh, like Biosteel Summers. So we had like all the records on the wall, right? So like highest 
squat, bench yeah. press, sprint. It's just like Wilson, 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 Wilson. No, like he's it, an absolute beast, man. He, yeah, he, he is just like made in a lab, and he, he, <laughs> made it, in a lab. it's it's and it, it's not by accident too, though. Like, and that's the thing is, you play against these guys, and like you know, I, I've played against Tommy Wilson since we were five years old, and he was on the North Toronto. Yeah, like, and I was on West yeah. Mall. We were battling West Mall, it right? Out, right? Yeah. So, so we we uh, we never actually got to play in the same club. Still, <laughs> oh, really? we were yeah. on the same yeah, team, yeah. right? Because I played three games. He was out yeah. the first half, but uh, um, but get you know I, I've known him for a long time. But it, it's it's nice to watch a guy like that go about his process. It's not an accident. He he is where he is, and he's had the kind of career he's yeah. had so far. And um, he, he just he trains so hard, and he, he he's so you know he does his due diligence. He's his diets is dialed in oh, yeah. from every point of, uh, of preparation. He's prepared. He's dialed. He's my favorite player in the league. Honestly, <laughs> I love that guy. Man, we so I played Tommy, and of course, first time, first shift, he goes out and runs John Moore directly from behind, yeah, like through the numbers. And so he comes off, and John Hines behind me. He's like, "Somebody gonna do something about that?" And I'm like, "Well, I guess I know who he's talking to." <laughs> and I looked over at Tommy, and in Jersey, you're right beside the benches. I looked over. I go, "You know, we gotta go, right?" And he just goes, "I know." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like <laughs> we yeah. got out there next shift and like we had a good scrap but oh you'll love this too i go we square enough he goes are you kidding me <laughs> he goes i'm just gonna grab your right arm and i'm like yeah. all right go for it bud um oh man, man. I, a lot I, of respect for that though you guys you like over the years some of the guys you fought i remember when we played you when you were uh you were playing Oklahoma or uh, we, we yeah. know Bakersfield. I, yeah, I, I played both, so it would have been. Oh, you know. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And you went. T- oh, you guys had off or, Z, or Z McLaren. You're talking about the McLaren fight. It, it, we had our lineup was Colt Nor, Frazier McLaren, Jamie Devane, David oh, Broll, Tyler Biggs. Oh my god! Like Sammy got, Carrick, ah. Sammy Carrick, Andrew McMillian. Like oh, we had an absolute wagon. And I remember, uh, I remember our coach comes in. And he's like, he looks at the lineup card. We had a bunch of injuries. Like. Looks like the circus is coming to town, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm in there, and me, Greg McKegg, and like a couple of guys are, you know, we're trying, we're, we're, you know, trying to score. And other than that, it's a gong show out yeah. there. I mean, I remember you and uh, Frazier nice. McLaren teeing off on each other. And I'm just thinking, like, oh my god. So before that, there was a little scrum in front of the net, and I cross checked Orzy. And so I was on a conditioning stint. It was my last game, so I was going up to Edmonton the next day. But I'm like, I got to get a, yeah, let's get one in here before you know, like I'd yeah, been off got, for ten months. Like, in all right, eh? and so <laughs> I, I thought you maybe just I, I cross check Orzy, and I'm like, I'm like, hey, you want to have a go? And he looks at me and goes, kid, you have like five more guys you can ask before me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, and yeah. then from ten feet away, I'll hear McLaren. Hey, I'll go, you bud. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, all right. Yeah. Literally, next face off, puck drops, gloves like into the third row, and we yeah. had like an absolute battle. Oh. Full square off, yeah, just absolutely was, teeing off on man, each other. Yeah, I, that was. Uh, I look back on some of those and I'm like, how did I, like, how did I do that? Like, yeah. it's just crazy. <laughs> Let's just jump into Davo. Like, talk about this kid and playing at with him at that age, and now what you're seeing modern, like modern day Stanley Cup play. It was so obvious how like how good it, like he it was. was. Yeah, it was so obvious, and I, and and we talked a little about about Robbie Fatork, but Robbie Fatork was our coach in Erie, and from our first camp. Uh, you know, he was, it was so obvious uh, what McDavid could do. And, and, and I remember Robbie was saying, there's only one guy out here with eyes in the back of his head. And he was talking about 97 and it was, it's the rate of speed that he does everything at and the, how slow he commutes, he computes everything. Like the fact that he can, uh, you know, he, he, he just wants to go eye to eye with you and, and, you know, he can go right or left and, and just expose you. And that's what he's trying to do all over the ice. He's trying to get isolate guys and expose them. And, um, you know, it's so funny when he was 15 years old, I watched him play for two weeks. I go over, look at his stick. I go, yeah, I, I got to get one of these. <laughs> and so, and so I go and I get the CCM guy. I'm like, I'm, can you make me a right McDavid stick? And so that was the first stick I used That's for it. like five years. Yeah. It's not much curve, eh? No, no, it's it, not much curve, low lie, but it's, it was, it was easy to handle. I've, I've graduated from, uh, from that stick onto the Nylander twig now, but, uh, <laughs> that was kind of what I just, I was like, well, what's he doing here? What's going on? What's some of the tricks to his trade? But every day I would just watch him and, and learn how he would create space learn how he would um make his moves and and he's just an incredible incredible athlete and, and another dedicated guy i mean i used to i used to say 
people would ask me about when he's having McDavid, the hype's real. I'm like, if there's a, a person to have the type of uh, skills that he have, he's the right guy for it because he's just so dedicated. He's like, you know, he's, his, um, he literally is so dedicated to his craft. Like we got to live together in Edmonton and what you said was perfectly the on ice stuff. When I worked on Sportsnet this year, it's cool when you get to sit back and like analyze all this footage. All he wants is one-on-one -on -one battles. Yeah, so when he's, he's so he, wheeling, he's, you said eye to eye, yeah. he goes directly at you and yeah. it's just like, He'll catch you flat footed. Exactly. Yeah. So he'll, he'll, that's the thing. You know, he's going to, he wants you as your defenseman, he wants you to face you right so that he can go either way and so that you don't have an angle on him. And so he'll threaten to the middle and then you'll, but he's coming so fast, you back off and you cre he creates all this room over here. And so his speed is such a weapon, but the way he can stick handle through yeah. the eyes with his speed, I mean, he's got it all. I mean, he's just, uh, you know, he's, uh, He's, he's fun to watch and he, he was an amazing to play with and even when he was 15 16 I learned so much from playing That's with him over two years um, and uh, things that I still use now in my game and and uh, you know he, he made me such a better player learning from him and you know I, I was three years older than him yeah you know? I was, mean he uh, do you remember the goal versus Columbus when he came back after his collarbone yeah I it's think like so. a, basically yeah, like yeah. a one-on four so yeah. I'll tell you a quick story we're sitting in the basement after that and I always I lived I lived in the basement Halsey and Connor were upstairs and so so he comes walking down the night. It's probably like 1130. I got the Norma Tech. I didn't even play that night, but I had yeah. the Norma Techs on. Oh, <laughs> just yeah. washing the yeah. legs. Just <laughs> healthy scratch Gotta that stay night. fresh. But then like, I think it was, you know, one of the, one of the people on TV was like, oh, goal of the year candidate, like this and that. So I sat him down. I'm like, you got to walk me through this. Like, like, tell me what's going through your head. And so the play starts and he's like, okay, so, you know, I go through here and I know I have one on my back and then, you know, I make it through the neutral zone and this and that. And then he starts talking about the one on two and he's like, you know, I faked right. And I saw he turned on his outside edge. So I knew I had him the other way. And I'm yeah. just like the way he slowly computes, like you said, like yeah. the way he thinks and sees the game is like nothing I had ever heard before. Yeah, for sure. And he, what he does is a little bit of math out there too. Like he, he'll, he'll drag, he'll, you know, bring a guy over to another guy and realize that that means there's space over there. And so he, a lot of the times you'll see him just throw to space, like little soft, little passes. I was on the recipient, the receiving, yeah. <laughs> receiving end of a lot of these, like in my last year in junior, especially like, you know, he would, he would go so fast and bring two, three guys to him and then just lay the softest buttery pass right to like, and then you're just stepping into one and <laughs> yeah, you're coming down Broadway. And so it, he, he, his ability to, you know, manipulate defenders and bring multiple guys to him and, um, he's one, one of a kind, one of a kind, man, you, uh, you end up getting drafted to Toronto right? We're here in Toronto. And I remember reading about you, you said you had about four or five teams that you thought might be interested. Yeah, I think so a couple three. questions for you right away. Did you did you think you were going to go in the six? Like, what was your mindset going in? And like, was Toronto a big option? Like, did you know that if they were picking late that you might be their guy? I only really met with three teams prior to the draft. Uh, I when I was drafted when I, that year I think I was 145 pounds out of the tub <laughs> You're like so yeah, yeah, like fresh out of the tub so I, I was uh, I was I was skin and bones you know I, I was I grew late I was uh, you know I didn't grow till like grade 11 grade 12 and so um, yeah I, I talked to I think I talked to New Jersey. Um, Remember meeting with Lou Lamorello around yeah. his big boardroom. There was about eight of them there. You went down to Jersey? No, they they, they had a, something in Toronto, and yeah. they had a, you know a bunch of the prospects yeah, that yeah. didn't go to the prospect or the combine. They come in to see him, and uh, I think I, me I remember meeting with Mike Feuda at a Tim Hortons Dude, across from Michael I Power. Love, shout out Feuda's, Mike Feuda. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, guy. yeah, he was great. I, I was it was nice to talk to him and. And then uh, Dave Morrison was the who was the head scout of um, of Toronto and. Um, and, you know, so I kind of, I talked to a few teams and I thought that maybe there was a chance and, you know, a big influence in, I think me getting drafted was Jimmy Hughes, which is the, the Player. which is the f father of uh, Quinn, Luke and oh, Jack, yeah. uh, you know, and Jimmy at the time was the head of player development in Toronto. And he was really good friends with Robbie Fitorik and he was a uh, player development in Toronto. So he was down watching Greg McKegg and Erie a lot and Sandre Olden and Robbie would be telling him like, Hey, I think this Connor is a good player. You know, he's getting better, et cetera. And, uh, 
you know, Jimmy had a lot of, he was, had a lot of help on, on my career, especially after I was drafted and a lot of those things. And he, he's, there's a reason his kids are so good because Were they around at all. Did you see them? Oh yeah. We used to, cause he was living in Toronto. And so, um, they would, we would go out and play shinny. I'd play with Luke when he was a little young Jack. I remember was tiny and, and Quinn played for my dad and, uh, and, uh, for the Marlies, they all were on Marley guys. And so, and Jack actually played for my dad with the Marlies too, but um, it was, I used, we used to go, always go out, play shinny with Jimmy and, uh, it, he learned a lot from him, but yeah, it was, it was amazing to get drafted to the Leafs and you, know, you grow up a Leaf fan and you know, in the area. And so it was, um, it was a surreal experience and it was really great for the development of me as a player, you know, yeah. to have all that resources there when I was 18 growing, getting stronger, be able to work with Barb Underhill, who I'm still close with, still skate with, um, you know, she helped with my skating a ton. And, Strides uh, come a long way. Yeah. Man. Not saying that like back in the day it wasn't, but holy, like the work you've put in is, does not go unnoticed. And I'm guessing a lot of that is due yeah. to Barbie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hours and hours on the ice with Barb, um, uh, you know, working, working on speed and working on things. And, uh, you know, so it was, it was a blessing to be able to be drafted to Toronto and, and to d develop my game through such, you know, the pivotal years. So, I mean, your time in Toronto, that must've just been a blast. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. You know what? It was a lot of fun, but it was, it was challenging like a little bit, especially my last year. Um, you know, I, I, that, that was probably my toughest year in the NHL is, you know, actually maybe this year kind of topped yeah, it, but, yeah. <laughs> but how come it was so difficult though? Um, you know what? I just, mentally it was, you know, it, it was just mentally, it was just getting to that point where I would, uh, you know, I was up and down the lineup and I just didn't, you know, I, I, I was, I had become not as sure as myself as, as I had been in my career and, and, uh, and it, and it showed in the way I played and, um, you know, it, it was great for me to go to Ottawa and, uh, and, to and to find my, find myself and find my game. And yeah, it was, it was a challenging year, but that was, an, you know, it was a great experience to play for the Leafs. I mean, it was awesome, you know, to go up to the Leafs and to, to go through the development. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And, you know, it's obviously tough, too, the way those seasons ended. We wanted to get through Boston, you know, those two years. And we, we had we had some wagons of a club, you know. I mean, we, we had a really deep team. And, um, you know, it was disappointing the way it ended. But, uh, you know, me personally, especially that last year, um, just wasn't, uh, it, it was, it was a bit of a challenge. It was, it was, a you know, you, you know what it's like, you go through your career, you have obstacles and, and you, you grow from it, you get better from it. But, uh, it was, uh, that was definitely an obstacle that, that third year in Toronto would just, what wasn't myself. So Toronto, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, uh, obviously incredibly, incredibly skilled, fun to watch. I'm, I'm a Leaf fan. I always have been, yeah. you know, always will be grew up in the city. Can you shed some light on what those two are like, not just on the ice, but kind of off the ice, uh, you know, away from it? Um, well, you know, Mitchie is, he, he's like a kid in the candy store and he's just, he's, he's got that little kid about him where he's just, he just loves, loves life. You know, he's, he's on the golf course. He loves it. He's, you know, he's, he's wake surfing at the cottage. He's loving it. Like he loves practice. You know, he's dancing all the time. He's a performer. I would say that's how I would describe Mitch. He's a performer. I remember when we were in, we would have a couple of karaoke sessions on at some of the team parties. What was this song? <laughs> what was this Dancing on my own, Callum oh Scott. My God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He put on a show. How so do you dance? Yeah. And, and it's just a performance. It's just the, and you see it the way he plays. It's just, you know, he, he puts on a show and, uh, you know, and he's just the perfect guy to kind of, you know, play in the city because he leans into that and he puts on a show. What about Maddie? Matt's is, he's a great guy. He was my roomie on the road. He's uh, pretty like reserved. I feel like you don't see him around the city a lot. Like he, yeah, I think, I think he maybe keeps to himself, but he, he's not like that around the boys. Like yeah, he, he's, okay. he's one of the boys. He's right in there. Like he, he, he's right in there with the guys and, uh, you know, he's, uh, He's, he's just the, he's just kind of the man, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. he's just, he's uh, got so much he, swag. even I remember he's like 18, 19 and he's like, he's just God, you know, he's Louis Vuitton, this, this, yeah, that, you know, he's yeah. just, he's just, that. he's just, you know, he's just, uh, he, he's, he's got that Hollywood about him where, you know, he's got that, that confidence and that persona and, and it leans into, to him being a good hockey player and, uh, you know, it, it, both great guys. Um, have you ever seen someone shoot a puck like that before? No, and so I'm still trying to like every every summer. Like when I play with a lot of these top guys, I try to you learn from them. 
you just know, watch, just yeah, stuck, kind yeah, of exactly. Or take one or two things, you know, for, for Mitchie, uh, I try to like, I watch the way he's on his edges, the way he's able to like transition from backwards to forwards and the way that he's able to open up his hips or, and so I've gone on the ice with Mitchie and his, and his skating coach and kind of pick, trying to be, he does this thing in warm up where he got, like, goes on one foot and then pivots on one foot from backwards to forward. Oh, yeah. It looks like he's just spinning around. Exactly. His edge control is out of, it's out, out of control. control. It's yeah, it's out of control. And, and so, you know, his ability to change directions and, and to just, top on any edge at any time is is what makes him so good i mean yeah. that and his you know his brain but uh and then matt's is his shot i mean his his the way he can catch the puck and all in stride and shoot it like all in one you know you know how hard that it's is just like, all wrist like all wrist strength you know, well, or it, like and in, in what i learned from with him is a lot of how he steps up his feet like he'll, so he'll be striding and so say he strides in on one foot and he takes as as he catches the puck, he's shooting off the other foot on the off, and, like on the he, strong side. Yeah. So say he he catches it on his left foot, he's shooting off his right foot. Oh, say I he catches you. it. Say he catches it on his right foot, he's shooting off his left foot. And his ability to do that at high speed and rip the puck as hard as he can and put it wherever he wants, like that combination of all that is what makes him so lethal. And you, and you've seen it over the years. You know, I've been on the wrong end of it trying to uh, stop some seam passes, but oh, yeah. a couple seams have got through over the years, and and. If he gets it on that forehand and his ability to catch and shoot on the forehand, it's like the reverse one timer. You know, he's not one time in it, but he's on his forehand. His ability to get that shot off is, is uh, I mean, it's the best in the league, best in the world. When you got traded from Toronto, I was shocked just because, I don't know, I just felt like you fit in here so well and you're a Toronto kid and then, and it's Ottawa too, right? Like, I'm not saying bad about Ottawa, but it's right in the division. Like, how were you feeling about the trade? How'd you find out about it? First of all, yeah, I'll, I'll start with that. I was, uh, I was, I was in the Hamptons at Matt Martin's wedding. Ever heard of yeah, him? Ever, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so Marty just got got traded, and uh, or maybe the year prior, right? And so, you know, me and Marty was a buddy of mine, and um, you know, our, our girls are friends, and so we were down in the Hamptons. It's eleven o'clock at night, and you can imagine I got a couple cocktails yeah, into yeah. me. You know, I, some my buttons are down halfway, you know. Like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready to. I'm revved up. And next thing you know, Mitchie comes up to me. He's like, "You check your phone." I'm like, no, I didn't check my phone. Like, who's texting me at 11 on a Saturday? I'm in the Hamptons. Like, what do you mean I didn't check my phone? And then I get a call, Jeff Jackson, my agent. He's like, "Call me." I walk out. I think uh, I, you know, I, I think they got married at Sabonic, I believe, which is uh, which is it's nice. Yeah, ever heard, yeah, yeah <laughs> ever heard of it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so so I'm walking on like the 18th fairway at Sabonic with on the phone. And uh, Jeff's like, yeah, Brownie, you got traded. Uh, it's going to come out tomorrow. I'm like, you can't wait. To you couldn't wait tomorrow morning. <laughs> like, and, like, you know, like, you know, and drives me nuts. Yeah. Man. And so, anyway, so, you know, and not only that, I'm around all my buddies, you know, I'm around all my entire, t like the most of the, the guys in the Leafs are there at the wedding. Right. And so I'm telling them, I'm like, oh, I got traded. And then, you know, it's emotional and I'm an emotional guy. I'm a crier. And like I'm next thing I'm crying. Oh. And, my, you know, and, uh, and so, you know, it, it was, uh, it was, it was an emotional perspective. Four or five years later, it was probably the best thing that could happen for my career and for the development of me as, you know, as a person. And, uh, and as a player and also led me to play in the world championships and win gold for my country, which after I got snubbed in junior, don't let's no world. Uh, yeah, so. I got absolute <laughs> snub job in junior. So I, it was nice to be able to be yeah. world junior 2021. You won gold, gold out of it. Yeah. Latvia, gold right? in Latvia. Yeah. So, so that's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it, you know, it, that it was able to you know win gold and something like that. And that's playing for your country is there's no, there's no, there's nothing better. I mean, I don't have, I can't have regrets about that because I was never even close to playing for my country, but that's the ultimate for me. I was in the Stanley Cup to wear Team Canada, like, that must have been unreal. Yeah, unbelievable, yeah. It was unreal. I mean, honestly, like, especially that tournament was a, was a whirlwind. We, like, were 0-3 to start the tournament. It was the worst t uh, start Canada's <laughs> start ever had. And we were just all shaking our heads, like, and, uh, and so we... 
so we finished the rest of the we finished the rest of the round robin. I think we went three zero and one, and we were starting to play better. And we got Ma- Mange, and he was lighting it up, and bread uh, <laughs> the bread man. Yeah, I was feeding the bread man, and so he, he's a hilarious guy. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah I played with so, him in Stockton. And so we didn't know what was going to happen after the re- uh, round robin because we were like three three and one. So like and that's not like a great record. So we didn't know if we were even going to get into the quarters. And so we needed like a tie to happen. And so we're sitting there drinking with the Brits, like the team Britain, like. <laughs> So team Great Britain. Yeah, yeah, Team Great Britain. We're having beers with Team Great Britain and we're like, we're watching, I think, like Germany, Germany, Latvia play, like, and it had to end in a tie and they On tie. The edge of your seat. <laughs> yeah. So we're having, so they tie and we're through. Now we're through. We got this. And Never so, thought you'd be watching a Germany, Latvia game. You're eh? hoping for a tie. Yeah. And like, it was just, uh, yeah, it was a, a hilarious experience. And we're on lockdown the whole time. It was COVID. So we yeah, couldn't leave yeah. the hotel. And so I'm just going to say this for the viewer. From my perspective sitting here, I can tell that you have played with some very veteran players and on some very veteran teams because of how well-spoken and positive you are. Yeah. And that's just something in these last 20 minutes, half an hour that I've, I've really noticed. Is there maybe a certain team washed this year or a couple guys, vets that you've played with your career that really kind of shaped your career or helped you along the way? Patty Marlowe would probably be oh, the awesome. would, would probably be the number one guy um, as far as uh, how to treat yourself too. I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm an ultra competitive guy like a lot of like a, you know like a lot of guys. And with coming that, you can be harsh on yourself and you can be down on yourself. And a lot of that time that you know, that can be counterproductive. And I remember Patty would he would make sure you know I, you'd be down on yourself, especially that last year when I was playing poorly and you know it, it kind of took me to go to another scenario and, and learn kind of what the things that he was telling me were to he would always say talk to yourself like you'd talk to your teammate you know and, and things like that or stick with that. you you know and and you know and you know what it's like when you're like <laughs> you sit beside a guy who you're, you're or you make a bad pass you get back and it's you suck brownie what are you doing yeah, like you know, you know, you know you do, yeah. and it's so it's it, it's important you know the mental side of it is is probably more important as far as you know your performance night in night out if you can be mentally clear and you can be uh you know you, you can feel you know confident night in night out that's when you're going to play your best you know the the difference between you know my eight goal season my last year in Toronto and and uh you know the way I played in Ottawa yeah it was a it was a bit about opportunity but a lot of it was just the, the was just my brain it was the way that I I conducted myself and the way I felt about myself night in night out and um it, it translates to wanting the puck and yeah. translates to you know uh being able to be constructive with teammates being able to have that you know be sure of yourself and and to help to help your team win and 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 clear out all the noise you know and i wanted anything to do with the puck i didn't want anything yeah it's just like well you know what that's like it's well sometimes you're just not feeling it right exactly and 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 that's the and that's probably the best way to put it is you know when you're not feeling it you don't want the puck you know it's like and when you are feeling it you're like give me the puck here i'm going to be here at this time i want it in on my backhand so i can look up the ice and i can skate through the neutral zone and you know and 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 then when you're not feeling it you're like let me give you the pitchfork and I'll just get it down the thing. I'll, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll skate as fast as I can. I'll look like I'm trying hard, yeah. you know, and there's, you know, there's, there's that big difference between, you know, everybody's trying hard, you know, and, and that's the difference, especially you see in the playoffs, nobody's out there not trying. And, everybody and, works. No, Even like, if it doesn't look like it from the screen, man, everybody's working. No, right? and, and the difference between a guy playing well and a plane not well is not, is nothing to do well maybe i shouldn't say it, not for everybody but for the vast majority of people is not to do with the effort they're inputting it's the way that in which they're feeling and, and the way in which they're computing how fast they're in their computing how what's going on in the ice and their spatial awareness and th- those are the things that separate the good players and separate anybody from night to night you know and to be able to stack as many good games as to- on top of one another is is you know how you put together is how you get better just that consistency eh? did you like you mentioned kind of self-talk a little bit and that's something i got into towards the end of my career was exactly what you said man i put so much pressure on myself yeah. and it's like i'd be out there and sometimes i know the play i have to make and it's simple and i just don't get it done you get back to the bench you're like man you're an idiot what are yeah. you doing yeah. like you're so dumb like you yeah. know what to do yeah when you know and you know that there's you know? coaches that are that you're telling yourself that and then they're reinforcing that you oh, know what i man. mean well i remember and, todd mcclellan <laughs> we're sitting and we're playing in florida 
And I get over my very first shift, I get over the red line and I kind of like swerve to the middle and Ekblad just stepped up and pushed the puck away from me. I get back to the bench and he's like, Hey, you're going to think about that play for a while. Take a seat. And it's just like, there's that helpful. Oh, you're like, is that going to help me? Like, there's no room for me. There wasn't a second or third strike really. And I think for depth guys, like Matthews is going to get every chance, no matter how much he turns the puck over. But for guys like you and me, like if you make a mistake, it's either press box or you're getting bumped down. Like, and that's what I thought about constantly. Yeah, and it and, was and such a such sure. a curse for me. But no, absolutely, and and you're not alone. Any, every, you know, I felt that too. And it's you know, especially early on in my career, where you know, if I'm playing well, I'm on the third line, and if I'm playing poorly, I'm on the fourth line. And and having that, you know, knowing that if you're going to make a mistake, it's going to be it's going to you're you're going to get diminished. It's yeah. it makes t- things tougher, you know. But it, you know, that's the reality of the situation, and you gotta you gotta be able to overcome that, and you know. And you learn through all that situ- through those situations, but yeah, it's absolutely it is. Uh, it, it's it can be tough when you're thinking about what not to do, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> or when you're just thinking in general. You yeah. know how fast things happen out there, and and so uh, now is this this is hockey talk right here. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so 29 years old, yeah. coming into what I like to call your the second act. I remember when I was 29, I was UFA too. I don't want to stress you out, but I was extremely stressed out yeah. in UFA season. I mean, I fir- signed my first UFA deal, like I told you, with Jersey. Uh, the second one came pretty easy, too. I signed in Calgary, but um, the last one sucked. And I just, I, UFA season can be very, you know, uh, stressful, distracting, whatever you want to use to describe it. You're coming into that. What I always did was I was like sit around and I had a list one year of like every team. And like, I was envisioning myself playing for that team and seeing who was on the team. Do I have any connections there and stuff like that? And like, what is your mindset going into your first UF first crack at a U unrestricted free agent? You know, I just, what's going through your head mentally? You know what? There's, there's so many moving parts and, and, and you've been through this. There's so many moving parts of, of, you know, of, figuring out where you're going to land, um, whether that's, you know, you, you personally, your family, you know, how their team, you know, so you could look at, you know, I, I, I there's a lot of nights where I played armchair GM and, and, you know, it, great, it, like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I sitting on my couch uh, all year and, and, you know, just a little bit too much time to think about it. And it's almost best to, you know, I, I've tried to just almost table table my thoughts on the whole thing and just focus on day to day, focus on getting better, focus on just, um, you know, excited to be home. It's, you know, it's hard to do that. It's hard to say, okay, I want to be here. I want to be there. This is going to be a perfect situation for me because a lot of the times it's not going to end up like that, you know, and the unknown and, and the, is obviously tough. Uh, you know, a lot, I have a lot of unknown coming up where I'm going to be. And, um, for me, I'm just making sure that I'm, I'm personally as prepared as possible and, uh, let the chips fall where they may. And, you know, just have faith in the universe. How much does a, like coming back home to Canada, will you look at that and, you're making me smile right now thinking about maybe a possible Euler reunion at some point in your career. Like, have you thought of that down the road being like, man, it would be really cool to play with Dave again at some point. You'd be lying to say no. Like, of course it would be, it would be awesome to play with, with, with him and, um, more so for anything, he's going to win a cup here eventually. And, uh, it has and, to happen. And, right? and, you know, and as a player, that's what I want to do. You know, I want to win. You know, I, I, you, you're a player, you want to win in a Stanley cup in the NHL. And that, that's, that's a, a, you know, a big priority going into where you're going to land. And so, um, but you, you think about every scenario, truly, man, your game has progressed so much. Like for me, it's been like a, like a treat to watch you from when, like I, I've known you since you were this big, right? Our dads played together at Western. Danny and Mike played together at Western. Your dad used to work for Bauer back then. I used oh, to come yeah. and I used to have raid, always the best twigs. Yeah, <laughs> I used to come and raid your guys' garage yeah. and your dad would be giving me sticks and stuff. But your progression has just been unbelievable. Talk about adversity. Talk about someone who probably, I don't want to say shouldn't have made it, but didn't have, you know, not, not a first rounder and all, all the hype around it. Like, like what, what has motivated you like this whole time? Like what, like where does, where does this come from? Is this, is I'd this say in- love of the game. Honestly. Yeah, really? You yeah. know, I, I just, I, I love hockey. It's always been an outlet for me uh, to just, 
and yeah, you know, whether it's playing shinny with my buddies, like growing up, you know, and I just, I love the game. And so when you love something, I think it's easier for you to commit yourself to, uh, to get better every year. And every single summer I, I want to get better. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm like you said, I think I'm going in my second act here of, of yeah. back half of my career. And I am the, you know, my, my expectations for myself is to get better and better and better. And, um, I now know, you know, who I am as a player, I'm more sure of myself as a guy and, uh, as a teammate. And so, um, you know, I, that's kind of what's been motivating me through, especially this year is just my desire to get back on the ice and back playing with the boys and score a goal again. And, uh, you know, and just be back in that NHL environment, you know, it, you know, it's, it's such a, it's second to none. You, know, you don't realize it, how much you miss it till it's, exactly, till it's, till taken, it's taken from, from your hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've been hungry all, all, all year in the gym. I, you know, I, I've worked, I worked and, uh, you know, like I said, now it's just kind of let the chips fall as they may as, as the, you know, UFA season approaches, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see, but, uh, I always have had that sense of belief in myself. I knew what I was like as a young kid. I was always a good player and, uh, I fell behind a little bit with my size, um, for, you know, through my teenage years, um, which made it hard on me, but also made it was, you know, it was an asset because I had to work harder to keep up. I had to do certain things. I had to develop certain aspects of my game to keep up. And, you know, then you grow into yourself and you're in your, get your strength and, and, uh, you know, so that was kind of, that's kind of what is, would have propelled me to, you know, get better and better as my career has gone on. And I think it really kind of climaxed and, and I think you showed how, you know, A, how much you love the game and how much work you've put in, uh, in your work with the Sens. Honestly, watching you night in, night out, uh, killing penalties, blocking shots, scoring goals is, that's the level where you were at. It, like, there's another level for Brownie too, I think. Right? Yeah, I, I think so too. I, I do. I think that I got a whole nother gear and, uh you know, I, I really felt like I was coming into my own. And uh, this summer I felt amazing about my game. And I felt, uh, you know, I, and it was just, it, you know, it's a shame that it got cut short, but, um, you know, I, I'm excited to prove myself. And, and I, you know, I think that I got another level and, and, and I'm excited to get there. Yeah. Well, man, honestly, from, like I said, from my perspective, playing against you in the American league and the, in the NHL and, uh, growing up, I truly believe like you're, you're just one of the good guys. And I, and I wish there were more of you guys in hockey. I don't want to say role players, but just guys you want on your team, you know, and, uh, I want to thank you for stopping by the, stopping by today and, and chatting with us and best of luck this, this summer in the upcoming year. I have nothing but, uh, nothing but love for you. And I'm sure, like you said, let the cards fall where they may, but, um, I, I, I wish you the best man. Cause you, you really truly deserve it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Hey, I had some fun here. Let's go. Yeah.